During the endless rains of the European fronts, soldiers discovered that ordinary tarps were a false promise. Canvas soaked through after days of exposure, rubberized sheets tore in the cold, and water found its way into every dugout. The conditions weren't just uncomfortable, they were lethal. Trench foot, hypothermia, and collapsing shelters became common. But out of desperation came ingenuity. Soldiers began crafting their own waterproof cloth using materials they scavenged from supply lines, repair tents, and even abandoned gear. What they created wasn't a standard tarp. It was a layered fabric shield that could hold back both water and wind for months on end. The core idea was simple yet revolutionary layer, multiple natural materials, each treated differently so that when one layer failed, the next one held. This became known among engineers and field mechanics as the oilskin burlap sandwich, and it quickly became one of the most reliable field shelter materials of the war. The secret lay in the combination of wax canvas, oilskin, and burlap. The outer layer was almost always wax canvas, ordinary cotton canvas treated with a mixture of beeswax, linseed oil, and turpentine. The waxing process made the fabric water-repellent, but still flexible enough to fold and stitch. Beneath that went a sheet of oilskin, a material originally used in fishing gear and naval coats. It was made by soaking cloth in boiled linseed oil and letting it cure until tacky but firm. This layer acted as the waterproof barrier. The innermost layer was burlap, which served a surprising purpose. It wicked condensation and absorbed moisture that managed to seep through, preventing pooling and mould. This three-layer construction gave soldiers something no standard tarp could provide. Durability that survived rain, mud and frost. The outer wax canvas shed most water, the oilskin core blocked what remained, and the burlap absorbed vapour that would have made the shelter damp from within. Many field reports from the Italian and Western fronts describe these makeshift shelters lasting entire seasons without failure, even when exposed to bomb shock and near-freezing downpours. Crafting one required patience, skill, and available materials. In the field, soldiers didn't have factory equipment or endless supplies. They improvised with what they had. Old uniforms, tent remnants and duffel bags were cut into strips or sheets. Wax was scavenged from candles, linseed oil from maintenance kits and burlap from sandbags or supply sacks. To recreate the same durability today, one could follow similar steps using accessible modern materials. Start by cutting a large square or rectangle of heavy-duty cotton canvas. Something like an old painter's drop cloth works perfectly. Melt beeswax in a pot and mix it with a small portion of boiled linseed oil and a touch of turpentine to thin it. Brush or rub the mixture into the canvas while warm, ensuring full saturation. Let it cure in the sun for a day. For the middle layer, soak a piece of lightweight cotton or linen in straight-boiled linseed oil until it darkens and becomes tacky. Lay this between your wax canvas and a final sheet of burlap or jute fabric. Stitch all three edges tightly with strong thread, preferably wax linen or nylon cord, and seal the seams with additional wax. Once complete, the result will be a flexible, weatherproof sheet that mimics the World War II design almost exactly. Why it worked better than anything issued by the quartermaster? Well, the genius of this design 
was that it used natural fibers and oils to create a breathable, self-healing barrier. Synthetic tarps and plastic sheets that came decades later often failed under strain or tore from sharp edges. But the waxed oilskin burlap combination could be patched easily in the field. A bit of warmed wax rubbed over a hole and pressed with a heated tool sealed it within minutes. The layers worked together instead of separately. When canvas stretched, burlap absorbed the tension. When oilskin cracked in the cold, wax from the outer layer seeped in to fill it. Soldiers in Norway and northern France even noted that the cloth became stronger over time, as oil and dirt compacted into the fibres, making it stiffer but more resistant to tearing. In modern use, outdoor survivalists and homesteaders can adapt this same idea. Instead of relying on plastic tarps that degrade in sunlight or rip in wind, you can make your own multi-layer fabric tarp that lasts for years. Hunters use this method to line lean-tos or create portable ground shelters. Gardeners apply it to protect compost heaps or firewood stacks. The material's breathability keeps moisture from building up, preventing mould or rot, something that even high-end synthetic covers struggle with. The WW Tree cloth wasn't just about waterproofing, it was survival engineering. Every layer told a story of adaptation. Wax was a renewable resource even in wartime. Linseed oil came from flax, one of Europe's most common crops. Burlap was everywhere, used for sacks, uniforms and supply storage. Soldiers learned to turn scarcity into strength creating shelter systems that didn't depend on factory production. This innovation carried over into post-war life. Many farmers and outdoorsmen continued using wax cloth and oil skin for decades, repairing them instead of replacing them because they lasted through harsh winters and humid summers alike. In a world now dominated by disposable materials, this forgotten W. Pood technique serves as a reminder of craftsmanship and endurance. You don't need expensive synthetics to stay dry. You need layers that work together, materials that breathe, and maintenance that keeps them alive. For anyone rebuilding an old canvas tent, creating a long-lasting roof for a cabin, or simply protecting gear outdoors, this method still works flawlessly when done right. The lost art of waterproof cloth deserves a revival. Recreating this doubly douce shelter cloth today connects you to a forgotten chapter of human resilience. It's a chance to understand how survival wasn't about gadgets or convenience. It was about knowledge, patience and resourcefulness. The soldiers who stitched their oilskins in the mud didn't think they were making history, but they were engineering survival through necessity. If you're passionate about history, restoration or self-reliance, this is one of those skills worth bringing back. Try making your own layered tarp. Test it through rain and cold and see firsthand why it outlasted every storm of the Second World War. These lessons from the trenches are timeless, built on craftsmanship that still outperforms many modern materials. For more forgotten wartime ingenuity and survival know-how, subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share this video with someone who values history that still works. Because sometimes the best inventions weren't made in factories, they were sewn together in the mud by hands that refuse to quit.